know love and safety. You no know, cut herself off from home to come with him into this country. The smiling, chattering Greeks, the roofs of Corinth, from which I see evil hanging in the clouds. But Jason has turned from her. He has cast her off and wedded the yellow-haired child of Creon, the ruler here. And these he is willing to cast Medea off like a harlot and betray the children that she has borne him. He's not wise. Medea lies in the house broken with pain and rage. She will neither eat nor drink except her own tears. If I try to speak comfort to her, she only stares at me with a stone on the shoulder. And I think she hates even her children. Old servant of my lady, why do you stand up and keep watching solitude?
Rancorous ill will towards persons whom I intend to protect. I know you are dangerous. You threaten my daughter. You have to go. Well, you misjudge me cruelly. It is true that I have some knowledge of drugs and medicine. I can sometimes cure sickness without a crime. These dark rumors, my lord, are only noise of popular gratitude. But you are not a common man. You will not fear knowledge. No. Nor change my decision.
make your preparation. But if tomorrow's sun shines on you, too, maybe you'll die. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. words. Thank you, not. I want my hands to walk with you. I will thank you. And the whole world will hear of it. I have seen this man's arrogance. I watch. I heard him. I am of Corinth, and I will say that Corinth is not well ruled. This man, this barking dog, women, it is a bitter thing to be a woman. A woman is weak for warfare. She must use cunning. And the woman, they say, can do no good but in childbirth. It may be so. She can do evil. Oh, triple fool, he has given me all that I needed. A little time. A space. You know what death took in Priam's house? It is Egypt, the lord of Athens. My lady knows him. My lady, Lord Egypt, is here in Corinth. You will see him and seek him fairly. We have refuge. I have things in my hands to do. Be quiet. Listen to me. You are driven out of Corinth. Egypt of Athens is here. What's that to me? I hold her in my arms when you are this long. Child, almost, my child, how can I not try to save you? Life is better than death. Not now. Time is running out. I have time! There is no hope for you. Child, if you do this red thing you dream of, all Corinth will pour against you. After my enemies are punished, I'll sleep. I'll sleep well. No harm will you hate me. And in particular, the children. My sons, our sons. You might have been decent enough to have thought of our sons. Did you consider them when you betrayed this household? Certainly I considered them. It was my hope that they would grow up here, and I had a very power to protect the same. And now, of course, we look forward to your children. Oh, it is enough! Something might happen. It is likely that something might happen to the bride of America. I've got a kid. But then only Creon is right to Oh, have you finished? I thought I would let you speak on and spread out your shamelessness before these women. Do you like it, lady? It is the dog's daughter's husband. It has finally got up its curse to come and look me in the face. Oh, Jason, how have you pulled me down to this hell of vile thoughts? I loved you once. I'm ashamed of it. But there are a few things that ought to be remembered by you and me. I saved your life. Five times if I've talked about that, your life would have been dusty death if I had not saved you. But you think you are safe in high places in Corinth and will need me no more. It is a bit of a dog, isn't it, women? It is well qualified to sleep with the dog's daughter. The world is closed to me. By the things I have done to you. I agree with you. You've been a very careful merchant of benefits. You forget none. You keep a strict reckoning. But there are things that I on my side that I have done that ought to be in the books too. You got no benefit. And now the previous thing that you're hating for that I very Creon's own daughter. You think I did like a boy or a woman? I did it to achieve power here. Now when it seems that power is a test. 
your jealous madness, but I'll never give it to you. And as for those extra servants, you serve all these folks. Whom do I thank for them? I thank divine Venus, the goddess who makes the girl fall in love. You did them because Venus compelled you. I enjoy it. Oh, you had better go, Jason. Oh, Gerasene, the contagious disease, and what am I to do but spit at you or curse like a drunken slave? I come here to help you, save you if possible. Your help is not wanted. Go. Go! If I could see my voice. Go, go quickly! Rejoice, Medea. There is no fair reason to be Rejoice. It may be so. Maybe I shall rejoice before the sunset. What has happened to you? Nothing. I'm quite well. Where are you traveling? From Delphi, where I went to consult the ancient oracle of Apollo. Delphi? Did you get a good answer? An obscure one. Some god had made me unable to get a child. Skilled your mistress, and you may be able to help me. You have never had a child. No. It is bitter. But when misfortune comes, it is bitter to have children and watch their faces grow dim to endure it. When death comes, it is extinction. One child for life after death. You feel it so. And if you had a dog eyed enemy and needed absolute vengeance, you'd kill the man's children first. I did not care to think of that before. I had no oh. enemies. I am well enough. I do not hurt my children. Their father hurts them. Jason? Who is Jason? He has denied and betrayed both of them and him. Jason has done this? Why? He has cast me off and married Creon's young daughter. And Creon this very day drives us into exile. He has sent you? No, he is glad of it. It's a choice. Ask for me. Ask him for refuge. Ask him to receive you in Athens. I do not think such men ought to be punished, Caesar. I think you have to do it. They said my nephew. Where will you go? She is in the deep storm and ocean of grief, but she would ask of you refuge in Athens. So I should. Aegis, will you shelter me in Athens? Why, yes. I will go forward with Creon, but if you come to Athens by your own will, I will protect you. I could repay you for it. I know the remedy is to make a dry stick flame into fire. Are you sure? My sterility? I could do so. Your fame is for profound knowledge and judgment comes. You'll come to Athens? I should need peace and a free mind to prepare the medicines to make me well. You'll have it. Come forth to into the world again. I will protect you. Will you swear it, Jesus? I promise. I trust you. Your oath is formal. You swear by the fruitful earth and high shining heaven. You are to break this oath. I will not break it. You have sworn. The gods have heard you. When you come to Athens? If I come. If I live, it will be soon. I have things in my hand to do that men will speak of afterwards while I and my children safe in Athens last. Farewell.
and weary of evil. I wish for peace. I wish to send this precious gift to that pale girl with the yellow hair. Tell him to come and take them and to bid his boys farewell. Tell him to come freely. Go. Run. Find him. Jason, I will not give my children to the cold terror of strangers. It is far better for them to share my exile. Only if you would keep them and let them stay here with you and Corinth, I might consent. Gladly, but you understand their exile with you all. I ask Creon to repeat this. You ask Creon to take my children from me. Forgive me, Jason, as I do you. Do you love the children, Jason? Certainly. I am their father. No, that is not enough. If I am to give them to you, you must be patient with me. I must question you very deeply. If something were to happen to them, would you be grieved? Nothing will happen to them in my care, as your mind doesn't It is not right to be certain of that. If they were killed, and their blood ran through the floors of this house and down the deep earth, would you be grieved? You have a sick mind. What a weak thing a woman is always dreaming of. Answer me! Yes. After I'd cut their clothes into red cobs, I'd grieve. That is true. Vengeance makes grief bearable. But Creon's daughter no doubt will grieve many other boys. But if something were to happen to Creon's daughter... Enough, Medea. Too much. Be silent. I am to conclude that you love Creon's daughter more than your son. They shall make the sad journey with me. Tell the boys to come out and bid their father farewell. I could take them from you. I force my dear. Try it, you. No. Creon has decided they will share my exile. Come, Jason. Let's be friends at last. I'm quite patient now. I have words. I'm not angry anymore. We are friends. Are the boys dear to you, Jason? I am satisfied that you love them. Oh, I'm tired, my dear. What is it? What is the matter? Nothing. Thank you. 
place them in her own hands. Come back and tell me what happened. Rejoice, women! The gifts are given, the bait is laid. Oh, how I wish the deep earth would swallow me before I do what comes next. I think it ought to be better for you, Mathia. If earth will open her jaws and swallow you into darkness. But one thing you will not do, for you cannot, you will not hurt your own children, but wrath like plague boils. I am sick with terror. I'll run to the palace. I'll warn them. Will you? Go. Go if you will. God and my best will. God is my doing these things. You cannot prevent them, but you can easily fall in the same fire. I am afraid of them. You are wise. Anyone coming between me and my justice will be what no man wants. Not justice. Vengeance! The joys of our house are vengeance. I drink that some gay good for evil. And the world was made. Only a coward or a madman drinks good for evil. Let me go, Medea. Let me go to my house. You will stay here and watch the end. You will be quiet, you women. You came to see how the barbarian woman endures the trail. Watch, and you will know. My heart is a shaking cup. She fled from her father's house in a storm of blood. And now here. Darken over spring. She widens her rings to fly up the twisted whirlwind. Patience, women. Be quiet. Something has happened. Someone will bring us news. Look, the children are coming. They have bright things in their hands, and their faces are clear and joyous. Was all that fear a dream? A dream? Rejoice, Medea. I bring good news that they have embraced the to give their presence and smile. She has welcomed the little boys. They are safe in exile. The princess saw in the dark boxes of brilliant gold. She smiled at it and marveled at it. Afterwards, she caressed the children and did forgive them for it. So we came away. Old man, there is more, however. It will come soon. Take them away from me. If there was any forbearance in heaven, let it reach down and touch that dark mind. Save it from what it dreams. And here comes a more stable witness, old friend. Catch your breath, take your time. I want to hear every gesture and cry. Death is turned loose and hobbled and run and fallen. Oh, please, nurse, I am very happy. Tell me these things from the beginning, one thing and then the next. My eyes are blistered. My throat is like a dry straw. I watch. I feared something might happen to her. I never thought so horribly. Placed on her little head, bright golden wreath, gathered the flowing gold robe around her white shoulders, going back and forth. She gazed at the girl in the metal mirror. Suddenly horror began, and I... You are not suffering. You saw it. You did not feel it. Speak plainly. Bending over, she fell. Then a serving woman came, saw her eyes and lips rolling backwards and screamed. Instead, ran for Jason, and others ran to fetch Creon. But that doomed girl, frightfully crying, started up from the chair. She ran. She was like a torch, and her hair, like a comet, streamed fire. Then Creon came flung himself on her, hoping to choke the rage of flame. But his friend slew him. His own agony made him forget his sorrow. I have finished. They lie there, eyeless, disfaced, untouchable, middens of smoking flesh. I have finished. I want all. Have they died when you came away? I am not able. Have mercy. No. The breath still whistles in the black mouths. No one could touch them. Jason stood in their smoke and tore at his unhelmeted hair. I have told good news well. I'll reward you. And as for those people, they will soon die. Laugh and be glad. Our enemies were great and powerful. They went down with the ashes, they went down with the sun, and the sun will still rise. No one has ever hurt me and suffered more than I had suffered. Therefore, this final sacrifice, so 
Jason will be able to say I have done. Farewell. No! I want him crawling. Boneless. Crushed. I have no choice. Away from you. Away from this evil dream. Flee to the world's end. Are you not fed full with evil? Is it not enough? Beast could have done it. I have done it. Did you feel nothing? Are you very evil? I should have killed you there. I saw you.
than my mistress with you, who never have seen Jason, nor loved and saved him, nor cut herself off from home to come with him into this country, the smiling, chattering Greeks, the roofs of Corinth, from which I see evil hanging like a cloud. And Jason has turned from her. He has cast her off and wedded the yellow-haired child of Creon, the ruler here. With these he is willing to cast Medea off like a harlot and betray the children that she has borne him. He is not wise. Medea lies in the house, broken with pain and rage. She will neither eat nor drink, except her own tears. And if I try to speak comfort to her, she really stares at me, the stone on the shore. I think she hates even her children. Old servant of my lady, why do you stand out here keeping watch in solitude? Is it some trouble of your own that you're lamenting? I would think Medea would need your care. Yes, it is my trouble. My lady's grief is my grief. And it has hurt me that I had to come out and speak it to the earth and sky. She's still in that deep despair? This evil is not declining. It is just at dawn. Is she so wrong? Did neither you nor Medea know the latest and the worst? What? What? I shouldn't have spoken. Tell me the truth, old man. You and I are too slaves. We can trust each other. I heard them say, when we walked beside the holy fountain Peirin, that Creon, the ruler of this land, said to drive out Medea and her children with her out of this house and out of Corinth, where they must wander the wild world, homeless, and helpless. I don't believe it. Oh no, Jason may hate the mother, but he would hardly let his sons be cast out. Well, he has made a new alliance. He is not a friend of this house. If this were true. <coughs> Listen, I hear her voice.
come, I suppose, out of love and sympathy. I understand that nothing is ever kept secret in a Greek city. You have heard that my Lord Jason has left me and made second marriage to the bright-haired child of wealth and power. I, too, was a child of power, but not in this country. I spent my power for love of Jason. I killed my brother to save him. I betrayed my father for him. I left my country to hate me forever, my endless exile. Here, I have loved him and bore him sons. I do not know how much a Greek woman will endure. As for me, I want simply to die. It's dangerous. You speak of railing your blood. For the images that the mind makes find a way out, they work into life. Let them work into life. There are evils that cannot be cured by evil. Patience remains, and God watch all. Let them watch my enemies go down in blood. Medea, beware. Some great person is coming. It is Creon himself. Creon is coming. He is dark with anger. Oh, my lady, my child, bend in this wind. your pride, these people will not be with you when you are gone. Medea, I have made my decision. I have decided that you must leave this land at once and go into banishment with your children. Oh, no. I'm here to see you. You mean banishment? Exile, banishment. Go with the name, Medea, but here you will buy no more. I with my children. I will not take them away from you. Children, my lord, my father, my lord, my What are you muttering? Nothing. I am praying to my gods for wisdom and to you for mercy. My sons are so young, tender, and helpless. You know, my lord, what exile means. The children are Jason's children, your chosen friend, I believe, now closer by. And as for me, your servant, O oh, master of Corinth, what have I done? Why must I be cast? I will tell you frankly, because you nourish rancorous ill will towards persons whom I intend to protect. I know you are dangerous. You threaten my daughter. You have to go. You misjudge me cruelly. It is true that I have some knowledge of drugs and medicines. I can sometimes cure sickness. Is that a crime? These dark rumors, my lord, are only noise of popular gratitude. But you are not a common man. You will not fear knowledge. No. Or change my decision. Gather your things and go. I pity you, dear. You must go. You pity me. You pity me. May God who hears me. We shall see in the end who is to be pitied. Therefore, I send you out of this land! It's not true! I'm not jealous. I never hated her, jealous for the sake of Jason. I am far past wanting Jason, my lord. You took him from me and gave him to her. And I would say you did well, perhaps wisely. Your daughter is loved by all. She is beautiful. If I were near her, I would soon love her. You can speak sweetly enough. You can make honey in your mouth like a brownie when it serves your turn. Not honey, the truth. Trust you or not, Medea, you are going out of this country. What I have decided is fixed. Make ready quickly. I have a guest in my house. I should return to him. Yes, I'm really asking. Who is the guest? I know that your will is granite. But even on the harsh face of a granite mountain, some flowers of mercy may grow. Have mercy on my sons, Creon. Oh, there is none for me. How long? <coughs> this is decided. Done. Finished. I am not a beggar. I shall not live long. I will not trouble you. Grant me a few hours yet. One day to prepare. No! I told you, Medea, today is the day, this day, and the hour is now. There are no flowers on this mountain. Not one 
Take it then. Oh, oh, thank you. Make your preparations. Thank you. If tomorrow sun shines on you here with you, die. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Enough thank words. You. Thank me not. I want my hands washed of this business. I will thank you. And the whole world will hear of it. In particular, the children, my sons, our sons. <laughs> you might have been decent enough to have thought of our sons. Did you consider them when you betrayed this household? Certainly, I considered them. 
It was my hope that they would grow up here, not having Mary Power to protect and favor them. And if I became queer out there, our sons would have been king somewhere. Oh, it is enough! Something might happen. It is likely that something might happen to the bride and the marriage. A guard against it. But evidently, Creon is right to be rid of you. Oh, have you finished? I thought I would let you speak on and spread out your shamelessness before these women. Do you like it, ladies? It is the dog's daughter's husband. It is finally God of his courage to come and look me in the face. Oh, Jason, how have you pulled me down to this hell of vile thoughts? I loved you once. I'm ashamed of it. But there are a few things that ought to be remembered by you and me. I saved your life five times if I have counted right, and all have not counted, that your life would have been dusty death if I had not saved you. But you think you are safe and high placed in Corinth and will need me no more. It is a bit of a dog, isn't it, ladies? It is well qualified to sleep with the dog's daughter. The world is closed to me by the things I have done for you. I see, my dear. You've been a very careful merchant of benefits. You forget none. You keep a strict record. But there are things that I have my side that I have done that ought to be in the books too. Is that not benefit? And I have this grievous thing that you hate me for, that I married Creon's young daughter. You think I did like a boy or a woman? I did to achieve power here. I would have used that power to protect. Then your jealous madness muddled everything. And after those acts of service, you so loudly boast, whom do I thank for them? I thank divine Venus, the goddess who makes girls fall in love. You did them because you had to do them. Venus compelled you. I enjoyed her favor. Oh, you had better go, Jason. Vulgarity is a contagious disease, and what am I to do but spit at you or curse like a drunken slave? I'm here to help you, save you if possible. Your help is not wanted. Go. Go! If I could see my boys. Go quickly! Yours, Lord Grafton. Atrocious. It's past the 
ask him for refuge. Ask him to receive you in Athens. Do you not think such men ought to be punished, Egypt? I think it's rather villainous. They told me nothing of this. Where will you go? She is in the deep storm and ocean of grief. She would ask of you refuge in Athens. So I should. Aegis, will you shelter me in Athens? Why, yes. I want to quarrel with Creon, but you come to Athens by your own will. I will protect you. I could repay you for it. I know the remedies to make a dry stick flame into fire you and- you cure my sterility? I could do so. You are famous for profound knowledge of joys and charms. You'll come to Athens? I should need peace and a free mind to prepare the medicines to make you well. You'll have it. Come forward to the edge of the world with you. I will protect you. Will you swear to me? I promise. I trust you. Your oath is formal. You swear by the fruitful earth and high shining heavens that you will protect me. I swear. And if you are to break this oath, I will not break it. I trust you. The gods have heard me. When will you come to Athens? If I come, if I live, it will be soon. I have things in my hands to do that men will speak of afterwards while I and my children safe in Athens laugh. Farewell. I find fossils for the 
Necrodarts or any other cities that are Creon's friend and watch them from time to time. You mean take them from me? No, Jason, I would not give my children to the cold care of strangers. It is far better for them to share my exile than to go to some stranger. Rather, if you let them stay here with you in Corinth, I might consent. Gladly, but you understand they are exiled as you are. I ask Creon if he refuses. You asked Creon to take my children from me. Forgive me, Jason, as I do you. Do you love the children, Jason? Certainly. I am their father. Oh, that is not enough. If I am to give them to you, you must be patient with me. I must question you very deeply. If something were to happen to them, would you be grieved? Nothing will happen to them in my care. But you rest your mind on this. It is not right to be certain of that. If they were killed, and their blood ran through the floors of this house and down the deep earth, would you be grieved? You have a sick mind. What a weak thing. A woman is always dreaming of evil. Answer me! Yes! After I'd cut their killer into red cobs, I'd grieve. That is true. Vengeance makes grief bearable. But Creon's daughter, no doubt, will breed many other boys. But if something were to happen to Creon's daughter... Enough, Medea. Too much. Be silent. I am to conclude that you love Creon's daughter more than your sons. They shall make this sad journey with me. Tell the boys to come out and bid their father farewell. I can take them from you. I force them here. Try it, you! No. Creon has decided they will share my exile. Come, Jason. Let's be friends at last. I am quite patient now. I have learned. I'm not angry anymore. We are friends. Are the boys dear to you, Jason? I think I am satisfied that you love them. God's hand, Medea, what is the matter? Nothing. But this I have thought of. You will take the boys and have them kneel before her. He, you will ask her to ask her father to let them stay here with you in Corinth. Her father is growing old. He denies her nothing. You will speak for them. I will place gifts in their hands. They say gold will persuade even the gods. Oh, my, if I ask, she probably refuse me anything. And I believe you're right, Chief. You can move, Bring me those gold things. I'm sorry for you, Medea. Parting is hard. I can bear it. You shouldn't have. These are king's treasures. Crown's house is gold enough of its own. What am I to do with golden vanities? Black is more my way. Pretty, isn't it? It looks like fire. Vine leaves. Flashing arrow sharp leaves. Come, taking you to the palace. Farewell. Be sure to place them in her own hand. Come back and tell me what happened. Rejoice, women! The gifts are given, the bait is laid. Oh, how I wish the deep earth would swallow me before I do what comes next. I think I can be better for them with you. The earth will open her jaws and swallow them into darkness. But one thing you will not do, for you cannot, will not hurt your own children, but wrap like clay boils. I am sick with terror. I'll run to the palace. I'll warn you. Will you? Go. Go if you will. God and my vengeful goddess are doing these things. You cannot prevent them, but you could easily fall in the same fire. I am afraid to know you. You are wise. Anyone coming between me and my justice will reap what no man wants. Not justice. Vengeance! The doors of her house are vengeance. I dream that someone gave good for evil, and the world was a maid. Only a coward or a madman dreams good for evil. Let me go, Medea. Let me go to my house. You will stay here and watch the end. You will be quiet. You women. You came to see how the barbarian woman endures betrayal. Watch, and you will know. My heart is a shaking cup that she fled from her father's house in a storm of blood. And now here, dark and over Corinth, she widens her wings to fly up the twisted whirlwind. Patience, women. Be quiet. Something has happened. Someone will bring us news. Look, the children are coming. They have bright things in their hands, and their faces are clear and joyous. 
Was all that fear a dream? A dream? Rejoice, Medea! I bring good news. The princess has graciously received your presence and smile. She has welcomed the little boys, and you are safe from exile. The princess saw the dark boxes of brilliant gold. She smiled then and marveled at it. Afterward, she caressed the children and did some different toys, and they came away. Old man, there is more, however. It will soon come. Take them away from me. If there is any forbearance in heaven, that it reach down and touch that dark mind to save it from what it dreams. I have come to watch table witness, old friend. Touch your breath, take your time. I want to hear every gesture and cry. Death is turned loose. I hobbled and run and fallen. Oh, please, nurse, I am very happy. Tell me these things from the beginning, one thing and then the next. My eyes are blistered. My throat is like a dry straw. I watched, for I feared something might happen to her. I never thought so horribly. She placed on her little head bright golden wreath, gathered the flowing gold robe around her white shoulders, going back and forth, and gazed at the girl in the metal mirror. Suddenly, horror began, and I. You were not suffering. You saw it, you do not feel it, speak plainly. Her face went white. She staggered a few steps, bending over. It fell. And the serving woman came, screamed and said, she saw her eyes and lips rolling backwards, and ran for Jason, and others ran to fetch Creon. And that doomed girl, frightfully crying, started up from the chair. She ran. She was like a torch. Her hair like a comet streamed fire. Then Creon came and flung himself on her, hoping to choke the rage of flame. But it ran through him. His own agony made him forget his daughters. I have finished. They lie there. Eyeless, disfaced, untouchable, minutes of smoking flesh. No, I, I have no more. I want all. Have they died when you came away? I am not able. Have mercy. No. The breath still whistled in the black mountains. No one could touch them. Jason stood in their smoke and tore at his unhelmeted hair. You have told good news well. I'll reward you. And as for those people, they will soon die. Laugh and be glad. Our enemies were great and powerful. They are cowering in their own ashes. They went down with the sun, and the sun will still rise. No one has ever injured me and suffered more than I had suffered. Therefore, this final sacrifice. So Jason will be able to say, I have sons that are well. No! I want him crushed, boneless, crawling. I have no choice. Awake, Medea. Away from this evil dream. Flee to the world's end. Are you not fed full with evil? No. Is it not enough? No.